praise you, Holy Ghost. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you need. Begin to speak to the Holy Spirit right now. Just tell him what you need. Begin to talk to the Holy Spirit right now. He's right here. Just tell him what you need. Pour your heart out to the Lord. Pour your heart out to the Lord. Don't wait. He is the answer. He is the answer. What do you need? Is it your family? Is it your body that needs to be healed? Surrender that body to God right now. I want you to give over your sickness to God. If you're sick, say, Lord, I just surrendered my sickness to the power of the cross. I surrendered my sickness to the power of the cross. Is it depression? Say, Lord, I, I surrender my emotions to the power of the cross. Come on, give it over to God. Come on. He's a person. Talk to him. He's a person. Talk to him. He's a good person. Talk to him. He's a counselor. Do you need advice? Do you need counsel right now? You need direction? Talk to him. Ask him, Holy Spirit, I need direction. I need some clarity right now, God. I need to know what I need to do, God. I need a decision. Tell him what you need. I want you to get into prayer with God right now. There's no spectating going on. There's no spectating. The Holy Ghost is here. Talk to him. Let's get to work right now. Come on, begin speaking to him. Tell him what you need. Let him begin to manifest. He's the leader. We're not the leader. He's leading right now. Let him be who he is. He's looking for you to humble yourself and tell him you need him. He's looking for you to humble yourself. Say, I'm done trying this my way. Come on. You got to humble yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee. You got to get submitted. You got to get yourself in line and submitted with God or you have no authority to cast it out. You can't speak to something when you're not submitted. You got to submit. Repent right now. There's repentance that needs to hit people right now. Come on. Let the spirit of repentance get you saved right now. Let the spirit of repentance help you out of that, that tomb you've been in. You can't feel nothing no more. You've been a Christian, but you don't feel anything. You're going through the motions. You need a radical shaking of God right now. Come on, repent. Open up your heart. What are you waiting for? The Holy Ghost is here. He's right here. 
Just the piano, please. Just the piano. Lift your voice in prayer, church. Come on. If you're hungry, that doesn't sound like hunger to me. If you're hungry, you want something. If you're hungry, you draw it out. Job says, I went to the rock. Jesus is the rock. And he said, I sucked out the rivers of oil. You got to pull it out. You got to pull it out with hunger and repentance. You got to pull it out with humility. Jesus is looking many of you in the face right now and he's asking, do you want this? Do you want this? Are you, still, are you so satisfied with your life that there's nothing else he could add? Are you satisfied? Are you comfortable? So comfortable that he can't shake you? He's asking, do you want what I've had for you before you were formed in your mother's womb? Do you want what I've had for you before you were even conceived? Before anybody spoke about you? Before anybody praised anything you've done? Jesus knew you and he gave you a destiny. Do you want it? We got to do business with God tonight. We got to do business with God tonight. This is God's room. We're not giving him a space. It is his space. We're not giving him a room. We give him the room. We're not trying to make room. This is his church. Sit down. Everybody sit down. Thank you, worship team. I'm going to speak for just a few moments. But man, I'm feeling the power of God. Something's going to happen right now. I love nights like this. This is what I live for. If you weren't here on Sunday, I encourage you to please watch that word. Watch it as many times as you need to because this is part two. This is the step after what we talked about on Sunday. On Sunday, we talked not without the Holy Ghost. We talked about how God accepts nothing that you do apart from the Holy Ghost. We talked about all your works, the best that you could do, anything that you could conjure up on your own. If the Holy Spirit is not a part about it, God will not accept it. God can't even fellowship with you. We proved that without the Holy Ghost. You have to have the Spirit of God in you before he even talk to you. God does not fellowship with sinners. God does not fellowship with unredeemed. He fellowships with the redeemed. He fellowships with his children. you got to have the mark that you're a child as you've been given. The Bible calls it a down payment, a deposit. In other words, the fact you got the Holy Ghost is telling the world and the devil, I'm on my way up to another place. I don't belong to this world. It's because you have the Holy Ghost that God's able to work with you. We talked about, could you have saved yourself? No, it had to take the Holy Ghost. Could you have fixed yourself? Some of y'all have some past that it's bad. Could, do you think you could have been without the work and power of the Holy Ghost? You can't be used by God. There's no way he'd work with a misfit like you and me. Some of y'all were liars, compulsive liars. You didn't even know the truth anymore. You said lies on top of your lies. Some of y'all were drunks. You had no coherence. You didn't even know where you were half the time. Without the Holy Ghost, could you really be in this building? Without the power of God, could you be saved? Without God, would you be off of drugs? Without God, could he still be working on you? We talked about that. We talked about, listen, that God, the Holy Ghost, is God. He's a person. He's not less than Jesus. He's not less than the Father. He's a person. He's God the Father. God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Ghost. He's God just as much as the Father, just as much as Jesus. But we in churches all over diminish him to being a spirit, or maybe he's just a feeling, and some see him as a cloud, or an entity, or an emotion. He's not an emotion. He's a person. He's not a cloud. He's a person. He can be grieved. He can be quenched. He can be lied to. He can be spurned into action by your words. And we got to the end of the service and we began to talk about something special. I asked you this question and what we're talking about tonight. What is your password? Put that on the screen. What is your password? You see, there's a vault. 
that's got all of the blessings paid for by Calvary. And guess what? If you're redeemed, they got your name on it. All of these blessings, they have your name. However, I'm about to tell you the Holy Ghost role and how imperative it is. And if you want what is in that vault, meaning, and this is what this word is for some of y'all tonight. Let me tell you what this is. This word for some of y'all is a rescue. Rescue from what, Gavin? I've already been saved. A rescue from a life of meaningless. A rescue from a life of the mundane. That's what I'm about to rescue you from through this word tonight. The Holy Ghost is going to come and rescue some of y'all because you're sitting there in your life as a Christian with not using any of your potential, not using any of the gifts God's given you. You're still suffering in depression when in the vault is your freedom. You're still suffering from sickness when in the vault God already paid for it. Some of y'all are nice, sweet people. But you're sweet and defeated. This word is going to rescue you from a life where you get to the end of it and you are a nice Christian, maybe sat in a good church, but did nothing for the kingdom of heaven. Remember, sitting in a church is not what it's actually all about. The church is beautiful. The church matters to God. But God actually made you the church so that you would be in the four walls and out of the four walls, you're still the church. You, everywhere you go, you, something's supposed to be happening. It's an exciting life when you got the Holy Ghost. So there is a vault. It's open to you. Let's talk about what's in it. Psalm 103, 2 through 5. Blessed and affectionately praise the Lord on my soul. I'm going to go fast tonight. So I need you to just, don't worry about the notes, watch it afterwards. Do not forget any of his benefits. Here we go. Here's one. He forgives all your sins. Forgiveness is in the vault. He heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies your years with good things. You can have a satisfying life. Not not a boring life. Not a mundane life. Not a life where you're just, I'm part of the way. And that's the most exciting part of your life. No, every day is exciting when you're walking with Jesus. So that your youth is renewed. How many of y'all are over 65 in this building right now? I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, you will have energy like you've never known. You can get energy back. Youth can be renewed. Age is just a number, y'all. Okay? These are all some of the benefits. Let's, let's look at more of the benefits. So there's so many benefits that, look, forgiveness is saying healing, forgiveness is redemption. How about new beginnings? That's one of the benefits. How many of y'all needed a new beginning? That's a benefit. How about a second chance? Not just one second chance. How many of y'all had about a thousand second? Oh, okay, okay. Never Loving kindness. Y'all needed some love. (laughs) Y'all needed some kindness. How about some mercy? Did anybody besides me need mercy? Okay, that's part of it. A satisfying life with many years. A life full of good things. Renewed youth. That's just a few of them. It's in the vault. Here, you might be asking yourself the question, how are these things mine? How do I have my name on these things? How do I deserve this? Colossians 1, 12 through 14. Let me tell you. Paul says, I'm always thanking the Father. He has enabled that you share in the inheritance that belongs to his people. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sin. You know, it's actually not about whether you deserve it. It's about whether Jesus deserves it. You see, Christianity in the gospel is this. Jesus took on the cross everything you deserve so that we could have everything he deserves. I'm going to say it again because maybe you don't know what the gospel is. The good news of the gospel is Jesus took on the cross everything you deserve so now we can live in everything he deserves. So it's actually not about you. You lived in darkness. You were a slave to the devil. You were walking around in darkness, but the moment you woke up, maybe it was light outside, but it was dark on the inside. You were ruled by darkness. Your thoughts were ruled by darkness. Your attitude was ruled by darkness. Some of y'all liked the darkness. I mean, if we're honest, some of us love the sin we used to do. That's why it's still a struggle today, because you still like it. You see, the enemy, the devil, knows the candy you like. Only fellowship in a move of the Holy Ghost on the inside 
will take the embers of desire. Because here's the deal. Some people get over something and they get over it for years. But the coals still have flames that are ready to be reignited. In order to truly get rid of the coals, you need a blood transfusion. You need an intimacy encounter. You need a moment with God that literally when you get in it, you're one way. And when you come out of it, you're completely shifted. That's what's going to happen to some of y'all tonight. There's going to be an encounter with the God who is the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jacob. You are in the lowest kingdom. you got to think about the kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of hell. And as we come up, then there's the earth kingdom. You, you surpassed the kingdom of hell, came out of the earth kingdom. Then there's the bacterial kingdom. You came over that kingdom. Then there's the fungi kingdom. You came over that kingdom. Then there's the animal kingdom. You came above that kingdom. Then there's the human kingdom. You came, then there's the atmospheric kingdom. Seven different atmospheres, mesosphere, atmosphere. All, the, all that goes straight up. The, that kingdom. You came higher. He took you from the lowest kingdom and with one repentance... One encounter, he took you from the lowest kingdom and threw you all the way to being seated with Christ in heavenly realms. Galatians 4, 3 through 7, I got to keep going. That's the way it was when we were before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves. Somebody say, I was a slave. It's the truth. You aren't still a slave, but you were. To your basic spiritual principles of the world. The world owns you. Even if you try to convince yourself, I'm not of the world. I go to church. Until you truly repented. Until you got serious about your walk with God. Some of y'all are still not serious. But before tonight, God's going to convict your soul. You're going to receive his love. And you're going to become serious about this thing. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to law. God sent him to look at this by freedom for us who were slaves so that he could listen oh man he did it so he could adopt you as his very own child you see God's intention is he wants you part of the family he wants you in the royal family now if you know anything about the mafia (laughs) you don't get the benefits unless you're part of the family You, you, you don't get these things just because you're sweet Just because you have an Instagram account that has 200,000 followers, just because you have a YouTube with a million people, that doesn't get you the benefits. You got to be in the family to get the benefits. So he made you a child. And because we are his child, God has sent. This is, see, only children get the gift of the Holy Ghost. He sent his son, prompting us to call Abba Father, so you're no longer slaves, but God's own child. Somebody say, I'm no longer a slave. Come on, all the way in the back. I'm no longer a slave. Mm -hmm, But you're God's child, and since you are his child, God has made you an heir. Heirs get the inheritance. So I have an inheritance. It's in there. So what's the Holy Spirit's role in my inheritance, okay? Well, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. So 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12, but it was to us that God revealed these things. Somebody say, by his Spirit. So you can't get revealed anything that's yours unless the Holy Ghost reveals it to you. So there are people everywhere who have no intimacy with the Holy Ghost, no friendship with the Holy Spirit, so they have a bank account full of stuff that they're not experiencing. Somebody say, I need a revelation. You see, to be revealed means it was secret at one time, but now it's not secret anymore. Some of y'all, you have things that have your, every one of you, if you're saved, you have an abundance of benefits that have your name on them. But it doesn't mean you're experiencing them. You won't experience them until you have a revelation of what you have. If you don't know what you have, how can you know what to expect? So he's going to tell you what you got. That's the first thing. And then look at this. For his spirit searches out and shows us God's deep secrets. 
That's so incredible. No one can know a person's thought except the person's own spirit. No one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not of the world, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So because you'll know the Holy Ghost, you'll be able to see what's in the vault. If you don't know the Holy Ghost, if you see him as a cloud, if he's just this thing that comes upon people that makes them squirm and sweat and wriggle like snakes, I don't know what kind of church you were raised in. I don't know if you thought he was weird. I don't know if you've been afraid of him. But just so you know, as long as you stay afraid of him and don't approach him, you don't approach your inheritance. The Holy Spirit is the one who has access to, number one, all the power. Someone say, I need power. All the knowledge. I need knowledge. And all the wisdom. Say, I need wisdom. He's the one who has access to all the victories and blessings that Jesus won for you on the cross. Listen, some of y'all need a victory. Some of y'all have been failing over and over and over. And you hate yourself more and more and more and you're disgusted with yourself more you're in more shame you're in more guilt you are feeling every day when you wake up you've had thoughts maybe i shouldn't even get out of this bed what use am i i'm the worst father in the world i'm the worst husband in the world what am i even doing i what i don't know what i'm doing man why always me you're in a cycle you're just experiencing failure you're thinking why always me can it happen to somebody else how come my car always breaks down how come i'm always sick how come my house always has depression how come i'm always arguing with my spouse why can't I be like Pastor Marco why can't I be like you're in a cycle it's time for a victory I said it's time for a victory the Holy Ghost has access to your victory he's the dispenser look at this one he's the dispenser of all the benefits one by Calvary with your name on it. It's there, but I want you to know, just because it's there doesn't mean you're experiencing it. So how do we get it? Here we go. You got to make friends with the one who has the access. You got to make friends with the Holy Ghost. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That word fellowship is the word koinonia. Someone look at your neighbor and say koinonia. Look at the other side, koinonia. Now say it like you knew what you were talking about, koinonia. <laughs> koinonia means three things. Are you ready? Write this down. A partnership. A partnership. It means you progress and you accomplish things together. You take on new tasks. You take on challenges. You take on missions together. I stopped being nervous when I came up to preach at 18 years old. I'm never nervous when I come and speak. People, how could you not be nervous? Speaking of thousands, speaking of small. But listen, I'm not nervous because I know who comes on stage with me. Of course, why would I be nervous? I'm not nervous because I know I listen to his voice. I'm feeling him right now. He's speaking to me literally as I'm looking at the crowd. I'm seeing God give me words for people right now. He speak as I'm speaking, he's speaking here and I'm speaking. He's speaking here and I'm saying, he's with me right now. We accomplish this together. You don't come up on stage by yourself. You don't get in business by yourself. What are you doing? There's a partnership. You got a mission, take it on. You got an outreach. You got to go with the Holy Ghost. We're not just going with somebody. Who cares if 50 people showed up for your outreach? You just need one person, the Holy Ghost, and you can start a revival in this city. Don't be complaining. Nobody showed up. Nobody's really saved. We were doing Adopt the Block, and if people were really Christians, they'd come out to the streets. What are you talking about? Stop condemning somebody else and get some power and go out and knock on some doors. Go show people some love. It's easy to complain about who didn't show up. It's easy to feel like nobody's there. But honestly, can I ask you this question? 
Who's the most important person to show up? The Holy Ghost. If you have him, everyone else is just a cherry on the cake. But you got what you need. Jesus only sent two. If I got me and one other person, we could overthrow a city together. The Bible says when they walked with the Holy Ghost, it said those men who turn the world upside down are trying to come to our city. We can't let it happen. We can't let it happen. Two people. Two people, they go into a city. Jesus said, listen, I don't want you to have four. I don't need you to have six. I don't need you to have ten to take over that city. Okay, so that city, can you imagine Jesus? That city has 10,000 people. Two is good for that. Okay, that city has 20,000. Two, two is good for that. Okay, that, that one has 500. Two is good for that. that. Because who is the third that was going? Who is the third? When he ascended into heaven, he gave them. He said, don't leave. Don't leave the city until he comes down. When you got him and you got two in my name, I am there in the... It's a partnership. Every demonic deliverance. Don't go trying to cast out demons without the Holy Ghost. Every time you preach, don't try to preach a sermon. Don't get your DG group together if you have invited the Holy Ghost. It's just going to be a bunch of your talking. It's going to be you trying to impress them with your revelation. But if the Holy Ghost comes, you'll be on the first scripture and he'll take over. And you'll be like, well, I guess my sermon's out the window. Let's get you healed. Let's get you to... He interrupts services all the time when you give him room. Oh, he loves to interrupt our agenda. That's, that's the one thing I got to watch out with with the Holy Ghost, right? I plan all this stuff, and I'm like, Psh. I'm almost laughing on the inside. I'm like, Holy Ghost, I know you gave this to me, but you might just switch it up. So what are we even trying to do here? Why would you even give me this? I can't tell you how many times I've been like, God, I spent hours. Why did you let me do this? <laughs> Number two, it's a companionship. It's a friendship. Put this down. Friendship. Companionship. You share with each other details, secrets, wants, desires, and dreams. You share in everyday details together, both the spectacular and the seemingly mundane. Do you know that every single one of us have secrets? It's not a bad thing to have secrets. Not all secrets are bad. I have things that my wife knows about me that none of y'all will ever know about me. It's a good secret. We have secrets. The Bible says, here's the thing about God, though. He can't keep a secret. The Bible says that if you'll go by yourself, close the door behind you, get into your room, and if you'll pray in secret, if you'll fellowship with the Holy Ghost, he said, this is what's going to happen. He said, the Father who sees what's done in secret, he won't be able to keep that secret. He'll reward you publicly. He's bad at keeping secrets. If you'll make history with God in private, he'll make history through you to the world. Never forget what I just said. Intimacy. It's in, number three, intimacy. You can receive complete fulfillment. Look at that. Complete, it means to have complete fulfillment in the other person. Um, just a check real quick, just so you guys know, like reality check. Your spouse does not complete you. Your girlfriend certainly does not complete you. Your kids do not complete you. <laughs> no. No one completes you, fulfills you, fully satisfies you, but the Holy Ghost, Jesus. No one. You see, those are called idols. If anything, if you run to anything else for comfort, satisfaction, some of y'all, the idol isn't like a demon, it's Starbucks. <laughs> How do I know? Because you can't go a day without your coffee. Is there anything wrong with coffee? No. It's great. Have a coffee. But if you can't go a day without your coffee, you should go without coffee. That's how you know you're addicted, you know? 
When you can't do without something, you should probably do without it. Okay, let's move on because I'm going to lose the whole church. Everybody's about to walk out. I talked about coffee. My God, I could have talked about the devil or anything else. But you talk about coffee, man, everybody's offended. Let's, let me, sorry, sorry, my God. Your spouse, you complete me, Jerry Maguire. You complete me. You complete me. Idolatry. Idolatry. It's not romantic, just so you know. I, I, I don't want an imperfect person who's got just as many issues and problems as I do to be someone who hopefully completes me. They ain't going to be able to do it, baby. Your husband can never satisfy you. Your wife will never fully satisfy you. They're not supposed to. This is the reason for your spouse. The Bible gives three main reasons for a spouse. Write it down just real quick for your spouse. Number one reason, this is why you have a spouse if you get married one day, to make you more like Jesus. What do you mean? Well, your wife is a fire that makes you like Jesus. Somebody's like, that didn't sound too romantic. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Your wife will call you out on the things that make you look stupid. Your wife will help you not look a fool. Your wife will correct you. Your husband will correct you when you're doing something that could hurt the family. That's Jesus rescuing you through her and through him. God uses your spouse to help you be more like Jesus. How? Well, it, see, the reason why you live together is not so you can pass by each other and brush in the hallway and be like, ooh, I'll see you later. <laughs> That's not why you live in the same house. God intentionally puts you in the same house so you're constantly confronted every day with someone you have to serve. The reason why you need to live in the house is to become more like Jesus because the way you were raised is going to be different than the way they were raised. The way they do their laundry is different than the way you do their laundry. The way that you cook food is different than the way they did. So the friction creates sharpness. More friction, the more sharper you become for the kingdom of God. you got to let your wife... You gotta let your husband, you gotta let some frick, it's okay. Not everything's an argument, it's just heated fellowship. <laughs> That's the Christian way of saying heated fellowship. Number two reason you have a spouse, a family. To create children, to make a family. The Bible says that children are arrows in the hands of God. You can launch them into purpose. They, they're, they're literally arrows in your quiver. Children are a blessing from the Lord. And God made the husband-wife relationship the only place you're supposed to have kids. The family unit is at the heart of God. Number three, to enjoy and to have some favor. You see, the Bible says the man who gains a wife gains favor from the Lord. So in other words, the moment you get married, the wife brings and upgrades you to another level of favor you've never had. So what begins to happen when you begin to grow in fellowship with the Holy Ghost? What begins to happen? Let, let's look at Galatians 5, 19 through 23. The sinful nature, these are the results. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, all those. He said, just so you see here, let me tell you again, as you have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit. If you live this life, you ain't going to heaven. Not if you sin one time, if you live this life and call it who you are. It's one thing to sin, repent, and say, I know it's bad, but if you call darkness light, God made me a homosexual, it's the way I am. Watch out. Let me tell you again, as I produced this kind of fruit in our lives, look at this. This is from hanging out with the Holy Ghost. These are byproducts from just fellowshipping with him. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Just by hanging out with the Holy Ghost, you begin to overcome temptations you used to fall to within seconds. Just by making friendship with the Holy Ghost, the people that annoyed you, you have patience for. Just by hanging out with the Holy Ghost, the things that used to make you afraid, you are living in peace within your own life. Nothing's shaking you. Why? Because a byproduct, just hanging out and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit brings these things into your life. 
2 Corinthians 3.18, all of us who have seen the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Jesus. We are changing into Jesus' image. Listen to this. The Holy Spirit's favorite image to work with is Jesus. Matter of fact, don't miss these words. Only the parts of you that look like Jesus are usable by the Holy Ghost. Not only is Jesus his favorite image, he won't work with parts of you that don't look like him. When you hand over your mouth and stop gossiping, stop speaking the devil's language, but repent and say, God, use my mouth to bring life. Use my mouth to bring power. What's going to happen is he's going to take your mouth because it's talking like Jesus now, and he's going to anoint your words. When your hands that have done the things it's done, these hands are used to fist fighting and knocking people out. You're going to have to hand these hands over to the Lord so they can act like Jesus. And instead of knocking people out, they're going to lay hands on little children and they're going to get healed. They're going to lay hands on... Oh. Any area of your life you submit to be like Jesus, he works with. So... What do I need? And this is the end here. What, 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 do I, what does the Holy Spirit want from me so I can get access? How do I get into that vault? How do, how do I get these benefits? Genesis 1, 2 through 3, the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, then God said, let there be light. He needs you to say the password. You cannot text him the password. You cannot type in and send him an email with the password. He needs you to say and know the password. He needs you to have a word that you know from God that will cause you to pass into what is already yours. Psalm 107 verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord, some of y'all, listen, quiet Christians are sweet and they stay defeated. Quiet Christians are sweet and kind, but they stay defeated. He needs you to say it. If you've been saved from drugs, I want you right now to stand up and I want you to say, I'm redeemed right now. Come on. Come on. If you have been rescued from alcoholism, I need you to stand up and say, I'm redeemed. Come on. Where are you? Don't be ashamed. Let the redeemed of the Lord. If you were in depression, total depression, if you said, I never thought I'd ever be happy again, but God brought your joy, Brock, stand up and I want you to shout, I'm redeemed. Look at all these people right now. Whoa. That demon of depression couldn't hold you. That demon of depression couldn't hold you. Here's one. Uh, I'm going to ask this right now. I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. If you say we were on the brink of a divorce and you are here with your wife and you are still married, stand up right now and say, I am redeemed. Look at this couple. Look at this couple. Come on now. Look at them. Look at them. They stayed. God did a breakthrough. God did a breakthrough. You got to say it. Don't be ashamed of what Jesus has done. You got to tell everybody. You got to say it when you're going through the drive through it in and out. Hey, I'd like a double-double and make it animal style with a shake on the side. By the way, I used to be on drugs, but I'm redeemed. Ha, ha, ha. Sir, sir, you can just pull up, please. Man. You're going to Taco Bell. Give me that Chalupa Bell Grande with the... But I just want you to know I'm redeemed. I used to be on drugs, by the way. I can pray for you when I get to the window if you'd like me to. Ha, ha, ha. Quiet Christians, you'll stay sweet, you'll stay kind, we'll love you seeing you in this church, but you'll do nothing for the kingdom. 
It's got to come through your mouth. Why? Because if you don't speak up, your soul will speak up. Your emotions are going to run your life. Your mind is going to run your life. Your thoughts are going to keep you bound. Your mouth either has got to talk, because if it doesn't, your soul will go ahead and run your world. He's looking for the word that gives you access. Now listen, he works only with God's word. This is really important. The Holy Ghost does not move on your desires. You got to know this. I want it so bad. It doesn't mean he's going to move. He does not move on your hopes. I'm hoping one day I'll be healed. He can't heal you by hope. He heals you by faith. <laughs> hopes will not bring you a healing. Faith believes and knows. Now, let, just let me, let me, uh, faith is the next message some other time this month. But let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. Hopes don't get you anything. Remember, the Bible says we have a hope that Jesus will return. Hopes are future tense. They're for the future. They're things that still haven't happened. Jesus returning, we all have that hope. We believe he's going to come back again. But you don't get healing. You don't get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You don't get broke free of depression. You don't get the, by hopes. The Bible says you get it by believing in faith. Faith is in the now. But hear what I just said. Faith is always in the now. Now, if I were to tell you Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, do any of you guys need to be convinced of that or need faith to believe it? Why do you not need to? Because it's a part of, it's a part of history. We all learned it. The Bible says that Jesus bore our sicknesses and disease, and by his stripes we already are healed. You don't have to, but I don't need to convince you of something that's simply a historical fact. That's why you're not still healed. You still think it's something that needs to happen. No, the healing's already happened. You got to receive it. You got to know faith is in the now. When we lay hands on you tonight, you're not going to hope something happens. You're going to know this is the night you're meeting destiny. This is the night. It's now. What's your password? 1 John 5, 7 through 8, we have all these three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood. They all three agree. The Holy Ghost is in search of the word, which is the water. And the blood of Jesus, which drenches your life. He's always will be fine. If you talk about the blood, the Holy Ghost shows up. If you talk from the Bible, the Holy Ghost wants to confirm it. They are always in unity with each other. Your word, Psalm 119.05, is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. You see, the lamp only gives you enough for the next step. The lamp, the Holy Ghost uses the light to give you the next step. He won't tell you more than that. He's going to tell you the next step. If you obey him with the step he gives you, he'll tell you another step. What if I forget the password? Has anybody ever forgotten the password? <laughs> Uh-oh. You ever seen that? Yeah. Ah, I forgot Oh no, I forgot the password. Let, let me give you some encouragement. John 14, 26. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. And he'll bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Woo! He's going to help you remember. When you need that word with your sister, it will come on up. When you need that word to be healed, it will come on up. When you need what he's going to give you what you need. The Bible says he sent the two by two. And he said, when you stand in front of all the people when they're prosecuting you, he said, don't think about what you're going to say. He says, for the moment you open your mouth, I will fill it. Now understand this. He'll bring to remembrance. That means if you don't already have the word in you, he has nothing to bring to your remembrance. Whew. Oh, God help us. Jesus said, Matthew 4, 4, no, the scripture says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word, every step, every step, every word that comes from the mouth of God. Wait, 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 wait. So, Gavin, what are you saying? What are you saying? Stand up, everybody, right now. This is prayer time. This is when God's about to move. But I got one more thing to tell you right here is, wait, 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 Gavin, what is the Holy Spirit using to get into the vault? How did, what is he using? Does he have a key? He's got a master key. 
The key is the cross. The Holy Spirit uses the cross to access everything on your behalf. The cross is the master key. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, the cross is the master key. Look at that. The cross is the master key. He's using the cross. Now, Hebrews 4.2, this is two Wednesdays from now when I come back. I'm going to talk to you about this. The gospel was preached, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith who heard it. So you see, now you know who's got it. You know what it is for you. You know you got to say and have a word, but that word has to be mixed with faith in order for it to work. I'm going to teach you on faith in two Wednesdays from now. Make sure you do not miss one Wednesday this month. Every hand up. Let's let him come now. He's got access. Now, this is what I want you to do. We're going to keep it real low for right now. I want you to begin to speak to the Holy Spirit. Now, now, I, now here, understand. If you pray to the Father, you're not praying a bad prayer. If you pray to Jesus, I'm not saying you're praying a bad prayer. But I'd just like you right now to speak directly to the Holy Spirit as a person that he is. Remember, the Bible says this. Our Father who is in so the Father, his actual form is in heaven. How about Jesus? It said when Jesus ascended, he said, I have to go so that he will come. So it doesn't mean that you're still not connected to Jesus, but actually in their personal form, God the Father is on the throne. Jesus is in heaven. It says he's an advocate praying for you nonstop. But the one who is with you, walking with you all the time, is the person of the Holy Ghost. He's here right now. So I want you to begin to speak to him. Close your eyes. Begin to pray pray. Just begin to address him. I want you to address him in an intimate way. I want you to address him soft. I don't want you to scream in his face. When you come and you talk to me, you don't scream in my face. Speak to him. Tell him what you are believing for and how you need his help. What do you need access to? Because this is what's going to happen. You begin to speak to him and he's going to say, what's your password? Now, if you're like, I, I, I don't know the word. I don't know the word for this. Don't get upset. <laughs> Just wait a little bit. See if you bring something to your remembrance. That's what I want you to do. Lay out your problems to the Lord right now, to the Holy Spirit. Come on, be detailed with the Holy Ghost. Is it your daughter? Is it your finances? Is it your marriage? He has access. You have access to the one who has access to the entirety of the Trinity. He has access to the Father's knowledge. He has access to Jesus' power. Just talk to him right now. Come on, all over the place. We're going to take just a couple minutes. Talk to him right now. Speak to him right now. That's it. That's it. Don't pay attention to anybody else. No one should be looking around. You're talking to the Holy Spirit. This is how we talk to the Holy Ghost. He's right in front of you. He's right on the inside of you. He's closer than you think. Don't let your guilt and shame keep you from this conversation. Just repent. Say, I just washed the blood of Jesus on me right now. And then start the conversation. I promise, he's not trying to stick with your failure. He's not going to remind you of your past. He wants to move forward. We're going to do a massive inner healing right now for you. Talk to him. This is going to be an inner healing session right now. Just talk to him. Some of you have broken hearts. If you'll allow the Holy Ghost in, I know that you've been hurt. I know that you've trusted and somebody's betrayed your trust. The Holy Spirit will not let you down. Just let him in. Let him in right now. I know you've had a traumatic experience. Some of you... There he is, there he is, there he is. Come on, stay engaged, just stay engaged. You don't need anything fantastic, you just need him. You don't need anything fantastic from us, you just need him. Let him in, let him speak to you. Trust him, trust him. He's gentle, he's kind. He's here for you. 
if something comes up and you just want to say, I'm sorry, it's okay. Just repent. Just tell him, I'm sorry for ignoring you. If you feel like you've ignored, just let it go. Just let it go. He's not harping on the past. You need him right now. You need him right now. Holy Spirit, just begin to make surgery happen throughout this auditorium from the front to the back. Take out your scalpel. Take out your tools, doctor. Heal right now. Betrayal, I speak to you. I speak to the pain that is inside of your heart. Holy Spirit, go and heal that wound right now, I'm asking. Let him in. Let him in. You can trust him. He's there for you. He sees you. You've been stolen from. Somebody stole over $300,000 from you. I feel that right. Over $300,000. It was a close relative. Come on, give it over to him right now. I see the pain. You are afraid of your mother. You are afraid. There are multiple of you. You are afraid of your mother. She has manipulated you. She's a, God loves her, but you've been in a cycle of literally walking on eggshells. You're, you're walking in a place of manipulation. The spirit of witchcraft is in your house because you have felt controlled by your mother. Put your hands in the air. Release yourself. Release yourself. God is your Lord. God loves her. There's nothing wrong. I'm not speaking bad against her. I'm saying you got to release. Come into freedom. Let him touch you. Let him touch you. He's going to keep you in a safe place. God sees you. He'll help you have confidence. He'll help you stand up for the truth. Stand up for your house. Stand up for the word. God is going to heal your mother. God is going to work on your mother. Man, this is a word from multiple people tonight. Your mother... Hey, listen, when I said that if your marriage has been on the rocks and you got healed, there are multiple of you that stood up. But I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask something very, very, very powerful right now. And it's going to take a lot of boldness. But remember, if God reveals it, he will heal it. I'm going to ask you. It's going to be up to you. But there's marriages right now that are in this building. I see at least two that you say we are on the rocks right now and we need God to literally do something with us right now. We do not know how much longer we're going to stay together. I want you to get your wife's hand and I want you to walk up to the front right now. We need to pray with you right now. Come on, altar team, get up here. I'm just praying. Where are you at? Here they come. Come on, this takes, this is vulnerable, y'all. Give them a hand. Help them, help them. Help them right now. They're being honest. Look at these couples right now. They're being honest. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He's got you, brother. He's got you. Look at these couples. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're coming right up here in this aisle. Help them come up. Help them come up. Come on, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, they're willing to be vulnerable to be healed. We're with them. We're with them right now. God's going to touch them. Begin praying for them right there at the altar. You don't have to wait for me. Your child, your child is sick right now. There's something wrong with their intestines. It looks like a little girl. I could be wrong. It looks like a daughter. But wrong with their intestines right now, they have a lot of pain in their stomach. They don't know. You don't know if it's an organ thing. What's going on? If that's you, you're here at church. You happen to be representing. Could you just come up? Your child is sick at home right now. Could you come up right now and just stand in the gap for your child? Come up quick. Come up quick right now. Where are you at? There they're coming from the back right here. Come on. Come on right now. Just come and stand in for your child right now. Okay, okay, we're going to pray for you. You're going to take home the power of God. You're going to take home the power of God. Don't worry, don't worry, ma'am. Hey, come here. Come here. It's okay. God sees. God sees. God sees. You are estranged from your father. You have not spoken to your father. You need a serious breakthrough. You have tried. You have tried to reconnect with your father. I see some of y'all, it's been multiple times. A couple of y'all, it's just, you're just, you're, you, you are estranged from your father. Your relationship is totally broken. I need you to come up right now. Come up right now, specifically with your father. Come up right now. Let God begin to move on you right now. You have an abscess. You have an abscess in your mouth. 
You have an abscess in your mouth right now. Would you come up, please, to the front right now? You have an abscess in your mouth. Thank you. Come on up right now. Bring somebody. Whoever's not praying for somebody, find them right here. Autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. Come up here right now. If you have an autoimmunity disease right now. Autoimmune disease. Get up here. Get up here right now. Thank you. Over here. Bring them up. Thank you. Thank you. Bring them up. I don't want you to come up for this one, but if you've been having nightmares, your sleep has been robbed because you are having anxiety attacks and nightmares, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Anxiety attacks and nightmares right now. Everybody quit, 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 quit. Close your eyes. Keep your hands up. Close your eyes. Receive from God right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be freed right now from that spirit of fear and anxiety. Let it go. Let it go right now. It's simple. Just by faith, just receive the peace of God right now. He's invading your dreams right now. Be freed in the name of Jesus. Spirit of anxiety, I speak to you. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let him go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 You've lost taste in your mouth. Put your hand up. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. You lost taste. Your taste is gone. Put your hand up. Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. It's starting to come fast now. I'm just going to speak. You have a a heart murmur right now. There's a, a palpitating heart. Irregular heartbeat, put your hand up right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Right now, your right foot, in your right foot, there's a a deep pain that's on the top of your right foot. It's cramping your right foot. Your toes continue to keep curling up. You have to, you're trying to, it cramp all the time when you're on your right foot. Put your hands up right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive, close your eyes, receive from the Holy Ghost. I don't have to come out and touch you. You need to receive right now. The power is in the building. The power. Now, once you've received, you need to put some weight on that foot. Once you've received in your mouth, you need to be touching your mouth. You need to be testing it right now. If you have a breathing issue, whether it's asthma or bronchitis, begin to breathe with me. Come on, breathe. I've seen thousands of people right here, breathing problems from the front to the back. Breathe. The power of God is touching you right now. I pray that touch you right now. If there's a heat sensation going on, he's touching you. You will breathe freely. You will breathe deep, breathe deep. Receive in the name of Jesus right now. I see many people. Come on, put your hands on your chest. Breathe. Arthritis on your left hand. Arthritis, it's right here in your wrist, in your left hand. Put that hand up. Put that hand up. Begin to open and close your hand right now. Come on. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on. Keep testing it right now. He's the giver of the benefits. Come on. You are healed. You have already been healed. Come on. Receive it by faith. This is you showing faith right now. I am getting this tonight. This is mine. This is mine. You had you had a pancreas. Your pancreas burst. You had a pancreas. You, your pancreas burst. Where are you at? Put your hands up. Where are you at? You had a pancreas that burst. Where are you at? Is that you? Be healed right now. Is that someone in the back? Be healed right now. In Jesus' name. You have a disc that is out of place on the lower parts of your back right here. There is a disc. 
slip this that's out of place. Put your hand up right now. Put your hand up right now. Put it right on, put the other hand on your back right now. Everybody look at me right now with the back. This is a powerful miracle. I've seen this all over the world. Let's do it right now. Looking at me, hands up. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Slowly go like this. Come on. Follow me. Follow me. Bend over right now. Bend over. You're going to see many of you are feeling a release. God is moving and shifting that vertebrae. Come on, right now. Right now. Right now. There you go. I see you. Come on, that's faith. Keep moving, my brother. Come on. Come on. Move in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. If you right now are feeling a tangible touch of the Holy Ghost, I want you to wave your hand at me like this. Look at all these people right now. Getting touched right now. Just keep your hands waved. Right. Holy God, holy God. Sir, right here, L.A. Hat. L.A. Hat. Sorry, what is your name, sir? Yell it. Tommy? Pablo. Pablo, God is telling me right now, he's telling me Psalm 23, verse 1. You have a shepherd, he wants to lead you. You just need to turn toward the shepherd, allow him to lead you. God is saying, I don't want you to leave this without knowing. I made you to be a preacher. I created you to be a preacher. I just wanted you to know, you cannot leave this building. It will still be your choice, Pablo, everything you do, but God loves you so much. But he made you to be a preacher that is powerful. You will travel the nations of the world if you want it. He's got it in you. The fire is already in you. He wants to put his fire, his word in you. Jeremiah 33. He wants to make his word like a rock that is in your hand that will break hard hearts to pieces. Do you receive this? you mind just lifting your hands, Pablo? I'm going to pray for you right now. God, make yourself real to him right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you make yourself real to him. You love him. I thank you in Jesus' name. You come into his life. Help him. Help him with everything that he needs. In Jesus' precious name. Right there. Uh, Raymond, right behind you. The Raymond shirt. Raymond, you too, right here. Right here. Yep, you too. Could you just put your hands on me? My brother right here. No, right here with the Raymond shirt. Right there. Right there. Put your hand up. I know you're in the Spanish service. Uh, could you put your hand up as well? Man. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Forget not all these benefits. Heals our diseases. Forgives us of all of our sins and gives us a long and satisfying life. I see some hereditary diseases that are down your family line. That the Holy Spirit, you will not suffer from any of these sicknesses or diseases. Your children will not suffer from any of these sicknesses. I see God coming in right now. To invade your circumstance with I see your house being a pool of oil I see oil in the middle of your house overflowing it is a house of healing God is making your house a house of healing there is no more sickness and disease I drive it out in the name of Jesus from your house you both were anointed to be healers you were both anointed to be healers everywhere you go God says I want to use my medicine Take it out and use it. Take it out and use it. You have a house of healing. Now listen, not only is it going to be that, but there is a generational cursing, breaking anointing that is on your relationship. Where you come and you come into people's circumstance and the curses that have come from the grandfather, great-grandfather, you will come into it. You'll see what it is. God's going to let you see it sometimes like a color. You'll see like a color on them. You'll know, wow, it's a generational curse. Sometimes you'll have a smell. It's going to be different ways, but God's going to give you, say, man, we got to pray for you right now and renounce the curses over your life. God is making, you are curse breakers and you are healers. You will do it in many countries in Central America. You will do it in countries here in, 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 in America. I see you going to Africa, at least for a trip or two. You're a very smart man as well, brother. You got all kinds of ideas that are inside of you that you don't know what to do with or what to let out. God is going to give you a platform in order to bring those ideas to help the body of Christ. That's going on right now. Holy Lamb of God. Holy Jesus. Right here, uh, you have a black shirt on. It says the way right here, my brother right here. It looks like you have a Lakers hat on. Can you put your hand up? What's your name? What is it? Go ahead, say it. Okay. Joseph. Okay. Okay. Amen. Real simple. 
even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen, you've been through some trying times. You've had some moments that have been very confusing. You do not understand why some of these things have happened. God comes near. He says, that, Psalm says, I called out to the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me of all of my fears. Right now, you are no longer afraid of anything financially, emotionally. You are no longer afraid of the outcome right now. I want you, come on, lift him up. Right now, I need you to lift both hands. I want you to begin worshiping God, my brother. Come on, I don't have to hear you. Begin worshiping him that he's with you. Begin worshiping him that he's got it taken care of. Come on. I see answers coming by this week. I see answers coming by this week because of this moment, you have agreed with heaven and you have unlocked what's coming from heaven into the physical. I see right now, thank you, God. He is with you. Oh, man, get this, get this. Okay, not only that, brother. Not only are you not going to have to be afraid, he's going to give you two businesses. Two brand new businesses. Now you gotta come and tell me when this happens because I want the tithe. I'm just joking. <laughs> Two businesses. Right there. And, and one of them you already have been wanting to do. You've been wanting to build more. The other one's an idea that he's got inside of you you don't know of yet. But it's a talent you're going to have. People are going to want. God's going to take care of you, brother. And you're going to do it by always having work, always having the ability to make it happen. God will work with you. This is what's going to be amazing about you. You're going to work and you're going to create systems that you'll only have to work 10 to 15 hours and you'll make more than people who are working 60 hour weeks. It's going to be beautiful. God bless you. There are so many words in here. There are so many words. Listen, listen. I got to give one last one. My brother who's a bald man all the way in the back. You're lifting up your hand right now. You got a great, it looks like a Puma shirt on. Okay, my man, listen. There's so many words going on, but I got to tell you this. I see you right now, Hebrews 4, 12. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing between joint and marrow, soul and spirit, and it is the discerner between the thoughts and intents of the heart. God has been working on you. He's been working on you. I see him taking one piece off at a time. It's like he's peeling you like an onion. He's working on you. And I just want you to know, Philippians 2, 13, God will continue to work with you, giving you the desire and the follow-through to do what pleases him. You are no longer going to feel. Your life is about to take off. It's like a launch where you're going to be so busy doing the will of God, you will not any longer have any doubts, worries, or anxieties about what you're supposed to do. I see clarity coming to you right now about your call. It's very, very clear. God is going to be giving that to you. I see you writing down visions that you will have in the night, sir. I know that it might not be you haven't dreamt very much. I don't see you having very many dreams. But God is going to begin to give those to you with strategies. You will have to write them down, wake up, and then God will give you the next steps. This is for family. This is for your personal life. This is also for your financial life, sir. So right now, if you'll receive it, I'm asking God to open the windows of heaven on you right now and on your house. Come on, receive that. I'm asking for him to open up the blessings in Jesus' name for you. Thank you, Lord God. Just believe it and know he's going to do it. Every person, hands up right now. Come on. Now listen, this is Holy Ghost Month. This is just the beginning, guys. I do, do not miss a service. Listen, we don't know. I can't tell you everything the Holy Ghost is going to do, but I do know this. We have decided to make room for him. Now, if we do that, he's going to blow our minds. That's what he always does. This upcoming Sunday, Derek Faison is going to be preaching. He's going to have a word from God. Now, listen, every single speaker that comes is going to be different, but they're all going to be necessary. Listen to what I'm saying. They're all different but they're gonna be necessary. Something, I'm telling you, this month, see it like a puzzle. See that every service is a puzzle that as the peace comes together, you're gonna to be getting clarity about your life. Things are gonna come together, you're gonna to be getting closer to the breakthrough. Every one of us need the Holy Ghost and His power. But if you do not show up, how do you expect Him to touch you? This is worth it. Bring somebody to the building who is sick. You never know when the Holy Ghost will heal someone. God is already healing people tonight. Did you see all of these? Give him a hand. Did you see all of these people getting the healing power of God? Deliverance, power. God is opening up. He's going to touch marriages. He's already beginning to touch marriages tonight. So every single one of you, please, we love you so much. 
We got to let you go right now. We could be here for more hours, but please understand, the Holy Ghost won't leave. He's with you. He's in you. Take him home with you. Begin to make friendship with the Holy Ghost. We'll see you back on Sunday. We love you all so much. We love you all so much.